I invite everyone here to tune in and exchange those words for words that really work. I, I love that. It, this is an inclusive thing. And you know, I grew up Catholic and what I love is that my 86 year old mom does the soul sync practice. So it's beautiful when we have these menus that we can choose from that become these navigational tools that really break through barriers of whatever our backgrounds, beliefs, pathways, and even, even faiths are. The menu of choices of spiritual practices can seem overwhelming. We are truly hoping that in this 30 minute conversation at the Strong Body, Strong Soul show here, that you will be able to find some clarity. Please feel free to comment while you are listening. You might want to keep a piece of paper and pencil handy because Leah is going to be sharing some specific instructions on a couple of meditations that she and I both enjoy so much. I'm Maria, here we go. Hello. We're talking about energy all of the time here. The whole point of me being out here is to help raise the vibration of positive energy in this world. And in this time period, it seems a little crazy, right? So I have invited one of my favorite people in the world to be here for conversation with me right here. Leah, Leah, hi. Welcome to the show. Why don't you tell everybody where you come from? Who are you? Thank you so much, Maria. I'm super excited, delighted, and very honored to be here today with you and whoever is tuning in. Uh, as I'm going to say, the love that we found between each other was by uh, beautiful providence that brought us together through consciousness, through awareness, and through awakening. And that is uh, all comes from my being a, not only a student, but an advanced trainer with ACOM or o and Academy in India. I've been a student and a trainer with them for many, many years. And when I discovered their navigational map, their menu for higher states of consciousness and awakening and healing, uh, it was the missing piece in the Rubik cube of my life that made everything make sense. And what I have to bring to the world like you um, have so much more meaning and purpose. Yeah. So really, basically, it's an international philosophy and meditation school that bases everything, though it's very spiritual, on science and neuroscience more than anything. So it's neuromystical and it works. And during this crazy time that you just referred to, it is not only the navigational tool, it's the anchor, it's the map, the compass, and the sail so that we don't just survive this unprecedented time, which is bringing so much stress to the lives of us personally, but also collectively and planetarily, but it also provides this beautiful sail so that we can gracefully move through it, um, enjoying magic, synchronicities, miracles, along the way, uh, I, I literally see it as the great transformation out there. That's and I'm beautiful. Super happy to be here today. I'm so thrilled that you are. One of the things that I wanted to start off just by noticing some of the words that you just used right there are words that kind of scare people sometimes mystic, magical kind of things. And I like to start off my conversation sometimes just really honing in on the fact that meditation, spirituality, religion, use whatever words make sense to you in your life. That is the thing that drew me personally to the Aikam University teachings, the way they teach, but I've been studying with them for a long time. It was the Oneness University when I first started, Lee and I were just talking about that. It has evolved and changed just like everything needs to. And it keeps changing names a little bit, who's in charge a little bit. Things are shifting and evolving all of the time. And that's so important to note, especially right now, Leah, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is the whole idea of needing to have a guru in charge kind of thing. And we'll get to that in a minute. But 
I think that when you're studying and going through any personal growth, you need to go with your own intuition and instincts. That is the most important thing. It is um, so important to be comfortable and to and confident that you can take what you need from the teachings in the way that makes sense for you and your family. I mean, obviously, in a spiritual community like this, for instance, it doesn't matter whether you're Catholic or Jewish or whatever the case may be, completely what appears to be opposing sides of the same thing. As human beings, we all share the same energy. And I loved what you said about the words that I chose to use. And really, I invite everyone here to tune in and exchange those words for words that really work. I, I love that. If this is an inclusive thing. And yeah. you know, I grew up Catholic. And what I love is that my 86 year old mom does the soul sync practice. So it's beautiful when we have these um, menus that we can choose from that become these navigational tools that really break through barriers of whatever our backgrounds, beliefs, pathways, and um, even, even faiths are. Yeah. So, can we talk about vibration of mm -hmm. our voice for a minute? Mm -hmm. Because the voice has so much power to heal and to transmit across space and time. That's what I'm talking about a lot of times. Obviously, we're having this conversation right here in this space, but we don't know who's going to hear it. All we can do is put out our energy and love out there. The vibration of our voices is going to travel. So I would love it if you kind of explained to the viewers, to the listeners here, about the soul sync meditation, how that works. The soul sync practice is a beautiful practice that incorporates breath to relax the mind and the body. It incorporates awareness to see where you're coming from. It incorporates proprioception. You actually count each stage of the soul sync practice by touching very gently the tips of your fingertips to the tips of your thumbs. Now we could say that's just for counting purposes, but there's this really cool thing that happens where proprioception, which is our awareness of ourself, our physicality in space, is actually being awakened or stimulated, which is one of the reasons my 86 year old mom does this, because as we increase that, it increases our ability to have balance, inner balance, and our connection with the outer world. So everything is purposeful. Yeah. There's an aspect of it where we actually um, use a beautiful vibration and it's this the humming sound of a bee and it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. Well, that sound vibrates the sinuses in the top of the head and inside the sinus cavities, there's these little pockets and it releases oxygen to the brain as we do that vibration. And that quiets the mind. It actually shrinks the amygdala and it moves us into a calm state of consciousness. My two-year-old grandson, when he goes into like, you know, unconsolable crying for no reason, apparently to us. We just look at him and we say, mm, and little baby Grayson starts humming like a bee. And within two seconds, we watch the muscles of his body completely relax. He puts his head fully on my chest or shoulder and he gets really quiet. Yeah. It works with anybody. Yeah. Then there's another aspect where we're starting to move from calm and relaxation of the mind and body. Thoughts are quieting down to an expansive field of consciousness. And we do that by first noting the momentary pause that happens between every in-breath and out-breath, which normally we're not aware of. And then we do it by, again, we're using our fingers as counters. And then we do it by chanting an ancient, beautiful chant 
that is aham, which is Sanskrit. And it has a beautiful vibration in and of itself. And it means I am limitless consciousness or I am. And you can even use the English translation or the vibrational aham again for eight times. And that moves us from this calm state into an expanded state where the limitless self moves into this field or ocean that is a wondrous ocean. It's limitless. There's endless possibilities in that expanse of space, which is kind of beyond time and space, beyond thought and form. Mm -hmm. And in that space, which is a very relaxed space, we get to create kind of like Aladdin's lamp but you don't get seven wishes, you get one. We create one heartfelt intention. And we imagine or envision that in that space of expansiveness, in that ocean of limitless possibilities. We imagine it or envision it with clear details. We see it as though it's happening now, not in some future place or space or time. And we move into an actual state of excitement and joy and gratitude for receiving that heartfelt intention now. Mm -hmm. And it's that simple. So there's four stages to it. And what it does is again, starting from the beginning, its purpose is to relax the mind, quiet the mind, calm the mind and the physical body, and to expand us into a realm that is invisible, but exists. We can call it anything. Mm -hmm. And in that realm, we get to create one wish or intention. We can create that intention for ourselves or for someone else. Perhaps it would be a healing or for, it can be altruistic. Truistic. It could be for peace in the world, mm -hmm. more sense of connection between our hearts. Yeah. Anything. Beautiful. And it takes about 12 minutes to do. And hopefully we can give the link to the soul sync meditation to all of our viewers so they can do it. And kids love to do it. Yes. Kids love to do it. My 86 year old mom loves to do it. Yeah. It's a beautiful practice to anchor and expand us during this time. Thank you so much. Leah, beautiful description of it. And absolutely. We'll put in the comments here. The Ankham University has started an app. It's called the breathing room. And you are able to download that free app. There are many free meditations on there available to anybody, obviously. And we'll go ahead and put a link. You can upgrade and do a paid uh, subscription for additional meditations. But there are a lot on there that are for free. It is amazing. The most amazing thing for me, Leah, is that I've been doing a chanting meditation, the Chakra Dhyana meditation for many years, and I teach it in workshops and I love it. And you use particular words on each of the seven chakras that are the core. There are thousands of chakras, but this one, the soul sink is so simple. That hum translates across everything. And just like you were saying with your grandson, with your mom, with anybody out there, that mm sound is the same, whether you're saying Aum or Amen or Mama, Mama, that is a soothing sound of the earth. And it's so, such a blessing to be able to participate in a meditation like that with other people where words are not needed. It's really, really amazing. Something you can do on your own or in community. It's really beautiful. So the Akam University, we just went through a process recently. They, once a month, they do a, an event from India, it is transmitted globally. I venture to say thousands of people participate. During the call itself, the live transmission, maybe almost a thousand, but then it's available and people can participate in it later as well. So the number keeps growing. And just like we said, it just keeps emanating peace and love across the world. And 
we all could use more of that. So Leah, why don't you tell everybody just briefly what's coming up in December? Um, and by the way, we forgot to say, no matter when you're listening to this particular transmission, it doesn't matter. If you miss the event that Leah's going to tell us about in December, it's okay, because there's going to be another one in February each month and with a different focus. But what are they focusing on in December? So the Manifest series, really, I have to say, are my, my favorite little three-hour dive that happened yes. every single month. It's done on a, it's a series basis. One of the things that makes it the most special is that it's actually taught the entire three hours by the co-founder of ACOM or o and Academy, Sri Prithaji. This woman and her husband, who are the founders now and run the school and the programs, lives at a very, very high vibrational state, a very, very high state of consciousness. So she teaches from Akam, which is this magnificent, beautiful spiritual structure that was created for awakening humanity. She teaches from the top floor. And in that space, which is one of the most sacred spaces I've ever had the opportunity to be inside of in India, she teaches and she takes us on a journey each month to an awakening of a certain aspect of our consciousness. In December, because it's, we'll be celebrating the end of a very big and challenging year for all of us, and moving us into the new year, it's going to be about connecting us with that higher intelligence, with that vibrational quality or field, with, you could call it the divine. There are so many names for that nameless, formless form and name entity in our lives, that source, that presence. So it's going to be about connecting us in with it and creating a spiritual vision for 2021. And it will be culminated. She always does beautiful teachings, wisdom. She teaches from the actual state of consciousness, from the awakening she's giving us. So it goes in in a really different vibrational way than intellectual learning or wisdom does. And there's a teaching and then a process, a teaching and a process. So again, it integrates in that way as well. And it culminates with her taking us into what is called the limitless field meditation, whereby Preetha Ji goes into a very, very transcend transcendent state of consciousness and it's led, it's guided. We just follow along with the instructions. And she, in that beautiful, rare uh, ability to go into that state, takes us with her. And it allows the awakening that she's going to give us in December on the 20th to be embedded in our consciousness so that we have access to it as a tool you know, navigational tool to take into the new year with us, mm -hmm. with that thing that you talked about with peace, with hope, with calm, and with a lot of light for us, our families, our communities, and the world. Yes. Beautiful. Super needed right now. Thank you, Leah. And it, it's true. It's the whole purpose is to project into the future, to go forward, to get us on a momentum, but also everything you just said, I love it. It's that everyday life also, because I think that energy that she shares, that three hours, you guys, I'm not even kidding you. I will guard that time. It's from 8.30 a.m. Pacific time for me, 8.30 a.m. to 11.30. And I will guard that time. And I will not interact with my family during that time. And I will completely focus on it. But even now, days later, if I'm stuck in traffic somewhere, <laughs> I can think back to that. And that is the beautiful part of meditation practice. Just like Leah said, the soul sync takes 12 minutes. That's not very long. But when you are in a heightened state of stress and anxiety in your life, the more you practice that 12 minutes, the more you can snap back when bad things do happen. And I use also the, I'd love to add to that what you just said, Maria, is that the soul sync practice in particular, all of them, but this one in particular, if we did the soul sync 
practice every morning when we got up, like before we grabbed our phones, had our coffee and got thrown into the day, it would set us, literally set our consciousness, set our awareness Mm -hmm. for the entire day. And if we do it day after day after day, there's this accumulative process that happens where we literally get anchored in to the universe where we have greater access to that flow of ideas and, and solutions to problems and creativity. And all of a sudden that which looked very problematic or impossibly before opens up a world of possibility for us. And there's so much more flow. So it's not just about doing it when we're like, oh, crazy busy in traffic or looking at the world outside of us that looks really insane right now. It's about do, dedicating that 12 minutes every morning when we just wake up yeah. before we throw ourselves into our busyness right. to set our consciousness. And I love to actually, when I introduce it to people, invite people to do a 30 day soul sync challenge and see what happens to your life, your relationships, your work, your awareness, your perception of everything when you do it for 30 days and then you're never going to want to have a day without it. Yes. Beautiful. By the way, everyone's invited. (laughs) Anybody out there who's listening. And if you're interested in joining, it's a zoom call. So, you know, sky's the limit from wherever you are in the world. You're welcome to join that call to test it out. If you want to see what it feels like, because the breathing room app is fantastic. You can do the soul sync meditation on your own at midnight in your bed, if you want, you can lay there and do it. Or you also have an opportunity to be in communion with other people on Zoom calls like Leah's, but also all over the world, they're happening. You can find one in your area, doesn't need to be in your area, obviously, but it's available to you. Now, two other things I wanted to add, by the way, to what we're talking about, as far as soul sync, the 12 minutes every day, I wanna be, really clear also on the idea of self-compassion and about not putting a lot of pressure on yourself as well, because 12 minutes a day might seem crazy to some people. And I want to tell you though, it is worth it. But if you miss a week and you do it again, everything floods back. It's like riding a bike. So never, if you ever start any kind of spiritual practice, do not beat yourself up over it and think, oh, I can't do that. Do it for three days and then think it's ridiculous. No, you can always get back to it. Always, always, always. And you will start off where you left off. It will come back. It will flood back. Don't worry about it. That's what I would say. I also want to ask you, Leah, tell them about Serene Mind if they want something even shorter, if that seems like something that would work into people's schedule a little bit better, um, what's Serene Mind? The serene mind, and I love to tell people it's AKA is SOS or 911, is something that you can do in this drop of a hat. You can do it when you go to the bathroom at work. You can do it in sitting in your car. It literally is three minutes back to a serene mind of consciousness or a serene inner state. And you want to do it anytime you feel inner disturbance challenged by your personal or global issues going on, when you feel overwhelmed, you can't sleep at night, when thoughts are monkeying around in your mind, when you feel too much stress, when you feel reactive emotionally to a situation or a person, you can do it when nothing's going wrong. But when you notice any level of stress or any kind of inner disturbance, that's when you want to do it. Three simple steps, one minute each to return you back to that state of calm connection and to tap you into that beautiful, I'm going to just call it state of grace, which is the present moment. We're talking about the present moment. So that's what it does. It returns us to the present moment. The first one minute, all you're doing is closing your eyes. 
you're sitting perfectly still and you're bringing your inner awareness to your breath. Now that sounds really simple, especially when I tell you it's only for one minute, 60 seconds, but that can be a big challenging 60 seconds for a lot of people. So just like you said, with any spiritual practice, we're very gentle in that one minute while you're bringing your observation inwardly to the breath, when thoughts arise, you very gently return your attention to breath. And you allow the exhalation to be twice as long as your inhalation for one minute. And that starts to calm and quiet and relax the mind and body. The second one minute, you switch your awareness from the breath to breathing to the thoughts that are arising. We have this thought process that's continual. We can't stop it. We've tried for thousands of years. And as we watch the thought process, we note that there's feelings or emotions underneath the thought process. And all we're going to do is pinpoint or identify the exact emotion that's arising and the direction that it's taking us. So if I'm in peace, calm, joy, gratitude, I'm in the present tense. If I'm in regret, resentment, anger, hurt, things like that, blame, I've left the present tense and I'm in the past that already happened. Mm -hmm. I'm dwelling there. If I'm in fear, anxiety, worry, concern, I've left the present tense and then I'm in, I'm in an unborn future. Mm -hmm. So in that second, 60 seconds, all you're doing is watching the thoughts and identifying the feeling and where you are present, past or future. That's it without judging or changing anything. Again, this is a gentle love self practice. In the last one minute, it's what I call the neuromystic aspect or process. You visualize, imagine, or think a tiny golden flame of light right at between your eyebrows at your eyebrow center. You see that golden flame and then you visualize that golden flame literally floating back into the very center of your mind or brain. You just hold the vision or feeling or think thought of that for one full minute. And what happens there, I love to call pure magic. The amygdala, which is the overreactive emotional response center, shrinks and quiets. It gets calm. While the center active, the prefrontal cortex of the brain gets activated. And that has everything to do with calm states of consciousness. That's all. That's it. Three simple steps, three minutes to a serene mind. Kids love to do it. You can teach it to anyone. It's on Breathing Room app as well. And it's really nice to have it be guided by Preethaji, which is the one that leads all those meditation practices. Yes, she's, she's wonderful. And, you know, it seems like such a ridiculous thing to have to remind people to breathe but exactly that that exhale being longer than the inhale you know we're we're on such high alert all the time we're like hyperventilating and retaining too much of the bad air so it's very interesting during the serene mind that first minute on the breath but then you move on and you don't think about it but it happens naturally that you continue in that breathing pattern, even though you move on to the next focus. So it becomes a subconscious habit. And that's the whole idea too, is to go forward into your life, right? right. And be able to slow down. It's, it's brilliant, yeah. Thank you so very much, Leah, for being here with us today. Mm-hmm. I'm so thrilled that you took the time to be here. I really am. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Check the comments below for links to some of the things that we are talking about right here. And I'm hoping that Leah will come back another time. In fact, I was thinking, Leah, I do have a private Facebook group called Meditation with Maria. Once in a while, I've shared a little bit of the breathing room app and pre on there but maybe one of these days we could schedule a meditation on there to 
to share with people who are interested. Be more than happy to. I thank you, Maria, and all the viewers. We're in this together. We are so in this together. And I actually have more hope than ever before that we're going to come out of this challenge triumphant and healthier in heart, mind, body, spirit, together as one. Yes. Thanks, Maria. Yeah. Namaste. We so appreciate you for spending some of your precious time with us today. From whatever platform you happen to be tuning in from, please do make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, of course, so you don't miss out on future offerings here at the Strong Body, Strong Soul Show. I am Maria. I love you. Thanks again for being here. Make sure to check the show notes for links to some of the things we have been talking about. Thank you, Leah, for joining me today.